Hi, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And this week's video is a little bit different because instead of doing a cool CSS trick or tutorial or building something, I'm just going to be talking a little bit. But stick around because um, I think if you clicked on the original name and you know, learning how to learn things faster and quicker um, and have a better understanding of it. And this is a problem that seems to be really often we have these crisis of am I good at this <laughs> and do I know enough of what I'm doing why am I not remembering these things they can, it can be really demotivating uh, if you don't think that you're learning fast enough or if things aren't sticking so I just want to start by saying it's normal don't be discouraged I've been writing CSS for like 15 years now on and off not continually the whole time um, at 15 years I think that's around when CSS was invented. That makes me feel old. <laughs> but I've been doing it on and off for 15 years. Um, I still forget things. So I don't want you to be discouraged if you find yourself forgetting things or getting frustrated with things. Um, but for this video, once you're past that, once you, okay, maybe I'm going to forget stuff. Maybe it's not going to be super easy. But there are things you can do to make it easier. And that's what I'm going to be exploring in this video. Quite a while back now, uh, Oath Betrayer left this comment on one of my videos. Uh, he said, Man, there's just too much to memorize in CSS. I feel like I don't make any progress because by the time I learned something new, I forgot the last thing I learned. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> um, and while I'm quoting Oath Betrayer on this, this is something that I've seen a lot, either through emails and just other comments in general. Just I screenshotted that one when I saw it because I, because it's a concept that comes up, or because it's a question that comes up so often, um, I thought it would be something that I that should be addressed because yeah, it can be hard, but there's definitely things that you can do to make it easier. And my initial reply to him was not to get discouraged and that it's normal that it's hard. The, the very first thing I want you to understand is that it's normal you're not going to understand everything right away. We just don't have, or most of us don't have that mental capacity. I wish I did. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm assuming, uh, you know, not everything just instantly clicks. And that's 100% normal and don't feel discouraged because of it. So learning anything new is hard. Um, a lot of these tips that I'm going to be talking about, they also apply to design. So I, I always say, you know, learning how to make the web and how to make it better while we're at it. Um, and design is a lot of the same stuff. I'm going to keep saying coding in this one, but if you're learning anything, I think the same advice will apply. So it's not just necessarily for coding. Um, and the first thing to do is just do a lot of it, like as much as you possibly have time for. If you have a 10 minute little pause, go and code something really fast. You have four hours this afternoon where there's nothing planned, just start coding stuff, writing stuff, making stuff. The more you do, the easier it's going to get. If you've ever been amazed by the top athletes or the top musicians in the world, then like how can they possibly be that amazing at something? Sure, part of it is natural skill. Um, that's just part of it 100%. But a part of it is because they put the time and the effort into it. If you're watching people that are professional athletes, they got there partially because of their skill, but they're also so in love with whatever they're doing they're putting every single aching moment of practicing that skill that then you just see for an hour and a half or two hour game or whatever where they're blowing everybody away. Um, it's practice, 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 repetition, 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 repetition. I think you get the point. My son, he desperately wants a skateboard for his seventh birthday, but he, he also desperately wants me to get one too to learn with him. And I know that if we do this, I'm going to have to be doing it a lot to be able to get better and I'm going to have to encourage him to do it a lot to get better because it's turning seven, he's going to get demotivated pretty fast. It's not going to come naturally, he's going to be falling, he's going to be hurting himself and I, doing it along with him, I'll probably be hurting myself and all of that too. Um, but just showing him that you get back up, you keep trying, you keep trying, you keep doing it uh, and you'll get better at it and it's going to come. But it's not, I can't just step on a skateboard and expect to know how to skateboard. I'm going to have to put a lot of practice into that. So this is the same thing with CSS. CSS and even JavaScript, even though JavaScript's a little bit different if you're getting frustrated with that, but all, any coding, I think, 
is insanely repetitive, but CSS is more repetitive than a lot of them because it's just property value, property value, property value, and you're usually using the same properties and values over and over and over and over again. It's repetitive by nature, so just by doing it and building stuff, you're repeating the same skills over again. You don't try and memorize these things. There's too much stuff to memorize, and you're going to memorize, okay, if I do this, it works this way, Except then you're going to use it in a different context and it's going to work differently. And then you're going to go, Rah! and you're going to be really upset because it doesn't make any sense. Don't memorize exactly how you think it should work. Just start using it and seeing how it works. And it's not going to work sometimes, and that's frustrating, but then you're going to see why it doesn't work. And then you're going to remember that next time, and it gets easier slowly but surely. Along with this principle of um, repeating it and just doing lots of stuff, make real stuff. It's fine if, you know, say you watch one of my videos and you're practicing along with me. You have CodePen open at the same time as the video and you're coding along and it works. That's not enough, A, eh? keep making stuff, making stuff, making stuff, but take that thing, you know, I looked at the 5 Minute Friday last week. That's really cool how I have clip text now or I can, you know, I can do a clip text to an image. That's awesome. Okay, now use it. And don't just use it in that code pen. Open up a project. Do a whole page where you're using it three times on that whole page. If you're just doing something in isolation, it's not going to help you that much. You need to use these things in context and use them in big projects so you start building up an idea of how it's actually useful. You open up a little Flexbox thing or CSS Grid tutorial and they're showing you how to make a layout, but they're not putting real text in there and you're following along and you, oh yeah, Grid makes a lot of sense and then you go and do it for real with real content, it's not going to behave the same way. It's not going to act the way you're expecting it to, and that can be frustrating too. So learn something, practice it a lot, but use build real projects. And not one. Don't go, don't go okay, I've figured out great, I've done one project on it. Build 10 pages with it, and then you're going to start understanding it. Playing with the layouts, changing things in the layouts, coding, 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 and building real things. And that could even mean going on to like Behance, and finding a beautiful website and trying to code it. And maybe you'll say there's some stuff on there I just don't know how to do. So don't do it. Do the stuff you know how to do, the stuff you're trying to figure out, and along the way you're gonna learn a whole bunch of stuff. And then you go find another one, or you find a working website that you think looks really cool. Don't look at the source code. Rebuild that website. Build out real full things, and you're gonna learn so much more, and a lot faster than just following along with tutorials and books, and even my own videos. These might be a nice stepping stone in the right direction, but they're not going to get you the whole way there. In the real world, it's so important. Um, if ever you've tried to learn JavaScript, you might have gotten really frustrated because there's lots of really, really, really smart people giving you these examples to follow, and you follow them along. It's a little bit like um, economics in high school. Economics in high school is the best possible teaching opportunity. The timing of it, everything is there and they just screw the pooch with it. <laughs> they, they take a concept that could be so important to these kids. I remember being in there and going, why am I sitting in this class? It's 100% useless to me. I don't care about macroeconomics. In high school, they should be teaching you economics that apply to you. You have a job at McDonald's. You're paying taxes. You want to go with your friends. How to budget your money off your minimum wage job. How many hours a week do you have to work to do this? And then you want to save up some. And what if you start saving... 10 bucks a week now, how much will that be when you retire? You know, stuff like that, that with real numbers, numbers that the kids can understand and use, that's going to make sense to them. It might actually get them interested in the subject instead of boring them with this macroeconomics theory. And the theory, so much of high school is theory, and learning theory is fine. So much of school is theory all the way through. And it's one of the biggest problems we have is we get stuck with theory and learning in a theoretical way, and I think we don't learn in a doing way. Uh, we learn to study, and study, and study because, okay, we need to read a book and write a report on it, or I need to learn about this history and then regurgitate the facts of what happened when. That's not doing things in the real world, whether you're designing, whether you're coding, whether you're doing something interesting. That's not how... Th <laughs> doing something interesting. <laughs> Research can be interesting too, but it's not the same skill set or same way of learning than when you actually have to take these things and put them into practice. You're going to learn by studying a little bit, seeing someone else do it, watching one of my videos, reading a tutorial, reading something on CSS tricks, whatever it is. You'll learn a little bit there, then you learn more by doing it and over and over and over and over again like I just talked about. 
Um, and you're not really focused on the theory. You read your little tutorial and now you're doing it, doing it. So these JavaScript tutorials sometimes that you run into, super smart people coming from computer science backgrounds talking about fizzbuzz and you're just going, okay, I know what a variable is, I know what a function is, I know what, how to do loops, but why do I need to know any of this? It doesn't make sense. You don't have it into a context that you can apply it. If you don't know about Zell, Zell is, uh, he has some JavaScript free stuff and a course and he changed the way I see JavaScript and think about JavaScript. Um, and it was, I should have figured this out on my own, but I went from following all these things that were theoretical and trying to understand it and trying to understand the deep theory of it. And instead of that, I just got frustrated and didn't really know why I needed, I, kn I knew I needed JavaScript to do stuff, but I couldn't link the theory with the practical. And he pretty much says, don't, you know, stop worrying about the theory build stuff, learn to use it. Like I'm saying now, you take stuff and you do it. And it was, my, a light bulb went off for me. I went, yeah, why am I trying to understand the core concept here when I can, let's understand how it works. Not, not why it's working. Let's understand, let's, let's see how I can make it work and how I can make this thing happen. And then I can start worrying more about the theory behind it a little bit. But first, I need to get it going. I need to start building stuff with it, making things happen on a website with JavaScript. And then I can start worrying a little more about the why it's all working. And for a little while, you don't even have to worry about the why. You just know it's working, and you can keep doing that over and over again. Now, I'm a teacher, and I teach in the classroom, and I teach people by telling them to do stuff and not by studying it. I don't want, I, I teach design, I don't want them sitting there and studying the theory of design, I want them looking at the theory of design, understanding it just a little bit, and then putting it into practice, because by doing that, okay, why does this look like crap and why does this look good? You made both of them, this one worked out better, why? And then we can dissect it a little bit. Same thing with, it's a little bit different with design than coding there, but the same idea is let's build, let's build, let's build, and those theories are going to start coming up and integrating in. So it's funny that someone else had to in you know, mention that for my own learning, but um, there it is. And if you want to know more about Zell, there is a link down in the description uh, below to his website and his uh, JavaScript course. Might be closed at the moment, but uh, it will reopen. Um, so even today, I do go on to like the MDN or the official documentation to understand more about something, but usually it's not when I'm putting it into practice, it's afterwards. And usually it's when, you know, if I'm going to start teaching something on this channel, for example. And actually, that leads really well to the next point, which is teaching. You should be teaching things if you really want to understand them. So a really short backstory for those who don't know. Um, I've been teaching in the classroom. It's my fifth year as a teacher now. Uh, this channel is entering its third year at this point. So, um, And before I started teaching, I could do a lot of stuff. I was comfortable with it. Uh, whether it was design stuff or, you know, the software, whether it was coding, because I do intro to coding classes at school as well. Um, I was comfortable. I could do all of this stuff. But when I started teaching it, I started to understand it at a deeper level. It just, it made me have to understand it at a deeper level to be able to teach it. Now, I'm teaching in the classroom. I'm not saying you should be teaching in a classroom. I don't care who you teach. You just need to teach somebody. It could be your brother, your sister, a friend, uh, your neighbor literally anybody volunteer at a, a community group where you're teaching the basics of how to make your very first website literally anything find somewhere to start a blog and even if no one's going there you're still going through the steps of teaching and you're going to understand things at a deeper and better level than you understand them now and you're going to start when you start getting to that point where instead of just going through the motions of everything which is the first thing you have to do. You have to be able to do it before you know, you go through the repetition. You're able to build a website. You finally got there. You can build a whole website. Now you're going to teach someone else how to do that. The next time you go to build it, or the new things you're learning from there, it's connecting to this deeper understanding that you've just built by teaching, and it makes learning faster and so much easier because you now have this really deep and you know, fundamental understanding of things. You can't get that deep fundamental understanding just by reading the theory at the beginning. You get there after. And don't expect, there's no shortcut. Or for most people, there aren't shortcuts. Some people are just geniuses and it clicks. But for most of us, there's no shortcut. It's about, I said we're going to learn faster. By faster, it means in a shorter amount of time. Because you're going to be doing this all the time. Spending, if this is something you're really dedicated to, it's something you really want to get good at, you have to put the work in. 
and it doesn't matter how little you know right now you're just starting to learn you can as once you've learned it you can teach it um, I'm not saying you're gonna claim to be an expert let people be honest with people with where you're at if you are an expert on a subject you'll be more of an expert if you're a beginner on a subject but you understand you're able to do some stuff on it you're going to be able to help people who don't have that knowledge um, students in my classroom the strong ones I'll, I love it and I encourage it for them to go and teach the weaker ones it's not to make my life easier and give me less work it's because for the weaker student it gives them another point of view this person's gonna explain it differently than I've been explaining it all this time so it's gonna help the weaker student and then you literally see the top student go from here to they just explode like it can bring the skill level of someone who's already really good so much higher once they start teaching it because again now they're understanding everything at a deeper level so write a ton of code just write 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 as much code as you can and make sure they're real projects when i say real projects i just mean not little things in isolation you're building out a single page website you're building out a multi-page website you're copying other existing things it doesn't matter but just not things in isolation so lots of code but lots of larger projects to put everything into context and then once you've done that, teach it. Teach people how you did that. Write a case study on it. Uh, you know, watch one of my videos, put it into practice, write a blog post on it. It could be a journal to yourself. You don't even need to be publishing this to the world if you're shy about it. Write a journal where you're, you're teaching yourself how you did that because that's gonna put you through the same mental process of understanding what you just did. And your understanding of it is gonna make it stick. So you're going to practice writing it, you're going to write it, you know, use it in three, four different contexts. Then you're going to write yourself a little journal thing, or you're going to write a blog post you publish, or you're going to make your own YouTube video on it, or whatever it is. But you're going to explain what you just did, and how you did it, and why it worked. Uh, and that might mean going on MDM and reading a bit of documentation, or it might mean going on the official documentation, or wherever it is, other websites, and instead of just my own stuff, but understanding a deeper theory and deeper understanding of it. And what this is all these layers and different approaches on it it's going to give you it's going to make things stick more it's so you're not necessarily learning more information faster if anything maybe it's taking you a little bit longer because you're doing it on a deeper level but then that's sticking and it's going to make future learning a lot easier because you're building a foundational understanding of how css works you're, the everything on css is sort of built on top of itself so all of a sudden that you're going to learn something new and go Oh yeah, that makes sense because of this over here. Same thing with JavaScript. Once you start getting into JavaScript, that's super hard. It's not easy to learn. You go through all these steps and slowly but surely it all starts going through the same thing and it's going to make it in the long game much faster, more efficient, and I personally think more fun and rewarding as well. Whew. I got kind of jacked up for that video. Um, it's a topic I guess I'm more passionate about than I realize. Um, just because I think people don't realize that it isn't easy, and but you you can definitely learn in better ways. You know, if you've been doing something one way the whole time, or if you've just done it twice, it's not going to stick. You have to stick with it. You have to be passionate about what you're trying to learn, and you just got to keep pushing yourself and committing to it and doing it and doing it and doing it. So I hope you found this video useful. I'd love your feedback on this. Um, if you have a blog, if you have a YouTube series of your own or a YouTube channel of your own or whatever it is that you already do, leave a link down in the description so I can see it and other people can see it too. They might get flagged as spam so if it doesn't show up right away, I'll try and unflag them because um, the more stuff we have there, the better. And uh, yeah, if not, just leave a comment, leave some feedback. I'd love to know what you, you know, your opinion on all of this. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome, but also try and teach somebody too.